one. Laura, would you tell me what your group um, said? Uh, well, we said that it's because they have a hypothesis and their conclusion. Because a hypothesis and a conclusion. What does that have to do with the if and the then? other words. Okay, so you need them to repeat it. So would you go ahead um, and say it first, what you said? I said that first part. Nice and loud. I said the first part is um, prediction, prediction or hypothesis, and the second part is conclusion. What did you say? Nice and loud. The first part is prediction. How did we know that this was an if-then statement? Because it starts with if and then it ends with and it has then if and then it has a hypothesis after that and then it has a hypothesis. Okay, can we have from one more person? How is hypothesis and conclusion connected to if and then? Go ahead. It starts out with like the statement and then it ends with the like the facts or whatever it is. Okay. So as a small group, I want you to right now summarize how does an if-then statement relate to the idea of having a hypothesis and a conclusion? Up with if an animal has fur, then it is a bear. 
Anyone disagree with me? Okay. Um, so let's see. Let's see if what we, what we came up with at first still fits the characteristics now. You said that an if then statement has a prediction, which is in the first part, and then proof, which is in the second part and a conclusion. Is that true for a converse? No. Does it have a first part that's a prediction? No. And does it have proof or a conclusion at the back? Yeah. Sort of, no, yes. Sort of. All right, let's hear from Owen why. Make sure you're talking loud enough that your whole group can hear. Uh, the reason why is because the first part in a converse is the facts. Um, like telling you, like, if an animal has fur, then it's a bear. So the second part is like, uh, it's the, um, it's not really a prediction. It's just uh, like a statement or a opinion. Anybody else? Dow? I agree with Owen, because like the first part is if an animal has fur. So it's like a prediction. So if an animal has fur. So To me, what I hear you saying is that this is a prediction. Oh, and did you say this was a prediction or was, was not? No, because that's the fact saying an animal has fur. If an animal has fur is not a prediction? Is it a prediction? Yeah, yeah. Is this true that it's a bear? No. Okay. So let's go back. Is this statement true or false? False. No, true. If an animal has fur, then it's a bear. No, it's false. How do we know whether it's false or true? Talk about it with your group. Because there are other factors that make this error. So this information you're giving, this information you're giving, when you come up with a vocabulary word that covers what the analogy just said and what Jeremy just said, platypus is a what? What's a vocabulary word? Fish. Fish don't have fur. It's a doy. I know what it is. Three, two, one. I heard. No, that's not true. You could be a platypus. I heard that you could be a dog, an elephant. Can somebody tell me a vocabulary word that covers all of those things that prove this is false? Um, Ainsley. So a counterexample proves it false, but we still haven't decided is this a prediction and a proof? Is it an if-then statement? No. 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 Yes. Because the bear part is true. But what? Is this a prediction? Yes. 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 Did we come up with an answer or some proof? Yes. No. What? Sam? What? You said what? We did come up with an answer. <clears throat> is it a true answer? No. But is it still an idea, an answer to our prediction? Yeah. Yes. So this, this is an if-then statement. A converse is an if-then statement, whether it's true or false. And we're going to learn some more about that today. 